Good morning, it's the 4th of November, it's Sunday morning, which means it's time for the Sunday vlog. But first, here's the jingle. Been a busy week in the shop. The Sysport is really taking shape. All the panels are now secure, they're secure to the base, they're secure to the back wall using a combination of dominoes and a combination of pocket hole screws. We've got the top cut to length and the top's now fixed on as well. It's got a nice bull nose routed on the end of it and it's all looking good. We've also put all the holes in place for our drawers and we've used the LR32 SIS for doing that. Made a video about the LR32 SIS and that should be coming out, I think it's um, next week. And we're now, I've got about four videos in this, uh, in this series. We've done the design video, we've done the first build video, second video comes out, second build video comes out on Friday, the final one will come out the Friday after. The two reviews are going well and they're proving to be really, really popular. A lot of people have quite a lot of interest in those. And today in the shop, I'm going to be creating a video about the Domino. I realized as I was doing the build video, we've not actually spoken about the Domino jointer. So I'll be working on the Domino. I've got the, the 500 Domino here, and I've got the collection of Dominoes. And we'll be talking about those. I'll make a video unboxing, setting up, using, and that'll be out in a couple of weeks time. I've been thinking about the finish that I want to use on the Sysport. Normally on Pine I would just put a coat of, of Danish oil on it. But I wanted to have a play with, with this. It's Osmo, I'm sure you've, um, you've seen it or you've, you've heard about it. It seems to be quite popular at the moment on YouTube, a lot of people using this. So I wanted to have a play. So I got in touch with, with Osmo and they sent me uh, four, four sample packets. So here I have a matte finish, a clear gloss, gloss finish, sorry, and a semi-matte finish and a satin finish. So I'm going to just use an off-cut of pine and I'm going to put these coats on that and I'll see what I think. I might make a video about doing that, I probably will, and then see whether there's any value in, in sharing that with you for the experience, the ideas and so on and so forth. But once I've decided on that finish, I then want to give this a quick sand down before I go much further and put a finish on that. The other thing I've been looking at, if you've been following along on the uh, Sysport build and you saw the design video, you will have, you hopefully remember that I've bought a number of empty um, sustainers. And that's because in the design I had some empty spaces that I knew I would fill at some point. I've got a collection of pretty accurate marking out tools and initially I was going to put those into the tool storage box when we build that but I'm using those an awful lot so I want them to be at hand here so I'm going to use a sustainer one to put my marking gear in. I don't want them just rattling around inside the box so I've discovered that Festool make a kit called the SE Vary Sys T L product number 497877 and what it basically is is a foam insert for the sustainers you get a lid which has got these nobles on it you get a solid piece of foam that inserts into the base of the sustainer and then you get one of these bits and I'm not sure you can see it that's got these cut out squares and the idea is you cut out those squares and then you can insert things into the foam um, and then with the foam lid in place that makes everything nice and secure so quite pleased with those um, I've looked at the layout and I've got some ideas of how I want to do it so expect a video on how to use these in the near future YouTube is as busy as always really pleased the channel seems to be taking off again I have no basis for comparison but it feels it feels good Remember when we started, 15th of October, uh, what's that, about four weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago now? We had one video, no views and no subscribers, and it was a complete voyage of discovery. The 21st of October, uh, which was the first vlog video that we made, we had eight videos out there, 81 views, and our first subscriber, which was a really exciting achievement. 28th of October, which was last week's, we had 12 videos, 
655 views and 22 subscribers. And today, on the 4th of November, I've now got 16 videos out there and we've made a milestone. We've got 1,106 views, over 1,000 views uh, of the videos we're putting out there and I think that's absolutely fantastic. And amazingly, we've now got 65 subscribers. If you remember last week I was talking about comments and I wasn't getting enough interaction, um, that's increased and we've had 33 comments uh, over the last uh, four or five days. So thank you so much if you have commented and we'll look at some of those comments in a second. It's interesting metric, 4,223 minutes of the videos that we've produced have now been watched. That's nearly three days of people watching Woodcrafter videos. And boy, is that a humbling thing. People taking the time to, to look at that. And most of the comments um, are coming in and wishing me well. People are enjoying the videos, they're finding them, them useful, and that's great feedback. And I'm looking to improve uh, the, the quality of the videos and how I produce the videos. So hopefully they'll get better and better and better. And if there are things you want to see, if there's things you think I could do better, please, please, please tell me, as I said last time, you're not really going to upset me, so just give me all the feedback uh, that you can, because I want to improve. Time for the shout outs. The new subscribers that I can see, Nick Birdley, Studio 88, Graphic Inside, Julie N. Bowman, Charlie Dome, Kevin Martin, Steve Robb, Charlie Wijaya, hope I've said that correctly, Edwin Gamers, Brian Chuck, Karen Swick, John Lee, Eric Hill, Gregory Johnson, Consuela Northrup, Raditz PC, and Stefan Kalfersch, Curioso, Ribson Hashtag PL, Volker Koch, Dominique Melando, Fortnite, and my little boy loves that title by the way, Sabuj Banglar, Lyric Prime, Moors Ent, Steve B, Boris Herman, Kevin Miller, and Anton Spari. Say, up to 65 subscribers now. I can't give you all a shout out because of your privacy settings, but these are the ones um, that I can get visibility of and I hope you don't mind me giving you a shout out and just saying thank you so much for supporting what we're doing here and going on the journey with us. Looking at the comments, uh, I'm getting a few comments in now um, about what's known sub for sub. And the idea there is if you're starting a new channel you can write off to people and you can say, hey, if you subscribe to me, I'll subscribe to you. And it's a way of accelerating the number of subscriptions that you get on your channel. Now, I don't mind you coming along and asking for a sub for a sub, but what I do is I look at the channel um, that you're asking me to subscribe to, and if, it's, um, if it makes sense with what we're doing, so if it's some sort of how-to video, if it's some sort of craft video or woodworking video, something relevant, relevant to growing a YouTube channel, something about the business side, then absolutely, I'm, I'm with you, subscribe and I'll promote the channel as well um, as part of this, this vlog series. But if it's not really relevant or there's something on your channel that I'm not, you know, I, I just don't think is I want to associate the brand with, then, then, I'm, then I'm afraid the answer is going to be, be, be no and there'll be no subscription there. But please, please get in touch, ask me, I'll look at the channel um, and I will write back and let you know what I, what I think. Okay, um, some comments coming in. I, I would love to see a follow on video about the tools. So as we're doing these two reviews, I don't really show you how to use the tools. We talk about it, we unbox, we set up, we calibrate, but I don't really go into the depth in the use of the tools. And that was a deliberate decision. The reason uh, I'm not doing that is because, remember, if you ever watched the workshop design video, I'll put a link here, I was talking about how I'm selecting the tools. Now obviously, <laughs> I'm investing in the Festool system and there's a reason for that that I talk about and I explain. But I'm buying the tools as I need them. So you'll see me using the Domino system on this sysport. You'll see me using the TS55 as I'm building the sysport on the table. You'll see me using the Capex as I'm building. So you're going to see the tools used an awful lot in this project build and future project builds as well. So I'm bringing the tool into the workshop. I unpack, unbox it, I calibrate it, I explain what the tool's about um, a little bit and then I'll be using it on a project. And I didn't really want to, to repeat that um, 
A, I don't see the value in doing that, and B, I've not really got the time, and C, I think it's better to contextualise the tool in a project um, space rather than artificially on, on a workbench. So yeah, there will be follow-on videos about the tools, but they're embedded inside um, the projects. I may come back and do a follow-up in the way of saying, what do I think? I mean, there's been a few things as I've used the Domino um, that I think, oh, I don't really like the way that that, that, that works, but they are... Um, they are small things and there's probably not enough feedback to make up an entire video. So I may come back and do a, a compilation. So here's the tools we've reviewed, here's my view of those tools, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, 12 months on. So, so watch out for that and I'll think about that, but great, great idea, thank you so much. Uh, we also had a comment about the, the Capex, somebody has gone down a similar route and they're talking about this part of um, the Capex. And if you remember, these are the crown mouldings, uh, the crown moulding stops, and this allows you to cut crown mouldings. Most of the extensions that you get with, with the Capex tend to sit onto the Capex base itself, and they're quite flat and they're quite long, and they're really, really, really sturdy. When you put the crown moulding on your Capex, you can no longer use that type of extension. So the extensions that we looked out, I looked at in the Capex um, series, check the link, were designed to work with the crown moulding. So the concern that somebody has is that, that it doesn't work with the nice extensions and they're the extension that comes with the UG kit and I'll find the link to a UG kit and put it in the comments. I don't have one to review for you but if Festival UK you want me to do that um, send one over and I'm, sure I'm more than happy. So they're saying that these aren't as good a quality and, and the ones that you'll have seen me use in the videos are, are this design here. I agree. I think that the extensions on the UG kit are much more robust. They're, they're much flatter, they're still telescopic, they, they're much more portable and they're much quicker and easier to set up. Having said that, I like the crown mouldings. They extend the base of, of the Capex and the ones that I use, the extensions, are still solid and they're still robust. I think that is pretty much it for, for this week. Um, I've got a new cup. I think Mrs. Woodcrafter was getting fed up with me bringing um, her fine cups into the workshop. So I've now got a tin cup, um, which is nice enough. Takes me back to my days in the Scouts camping. We're done. Great. Thanks for watching as always. Look out for the videos. Tuesday, I've got the LR30, LR32 SIS review videos coming out. Friday, we've got the next episode of the SysPort coming out. And then the week after, I'm going to move to a different frequency. Uh, I think Monday is going to be a business video. Wednesday will be the two review videos. Friday will be the projects um, videos. And then Sunday will still be the Sunday vlog. Have a great week. Thank you so much. See you soon.